Now, the Federation of Governing Bodies of South African Schools says schooling should continue despite the current COVID-19 surge. This is despite other education stakeholders, including teachers' unions, calling for an immediate end to teaching. Joining us is Paul Kolditz, CEO of FETSES, to give us more. Uh, Paul, a very good morning to you and thank you for your time. You are among the stakeholders who met Basic Education Minister Angie Mutsecha at the weekend to discuss the way forward forward at schools. Now, you've uh, given a different view. What forms the basis of your views? Good morning. Thank you. And good morning also to your viewers. The thing is that uh, paramount in our thought must be the best interest of children. Um, there are so many scientists from various disciplines telling us that it is better for the children to be at schools than uh, at home or running around in the streets and malls and where and other social gather gatherings. The point is that there are more than 9 million children that receive their only meal for the day at school. Um, there are learners that are suffering severe trauma with regard to the whole issue of uh, this the psychological um, lockdown. Uh, they need to get to their peers. Um, and then the other very important issue is the fact that at least at schools, children are screened before they are allowed into the school. Uh, and if they show symptoms, then that can be dealt with immediately. Um, they are referred to health officials and uh, they refer to the Department of, Basic, of, of Education of the province. Um, if they are at home or running around in the streets or in other social gatherings, no screening takes place there. You have no control over the spread of the virus in the community, whereas in the schools you have a controlled environment where you can teach children about the non-pharmaceutical protocols, the health and safety protocols, washing of hands, sanitizing, wearing of masks and social distancing, and all of that takes place in a controlled environment. And then finally, uh, also the issue of parents. Uh, millions of parents uh, are affected, apart from the 13 million children, uh, an equal number of parents at least uh, are affected by the whole issue of opening or closing of schools. Parents need to work. They need to have supervision for their children. There are a myriad of considerations that need to be taken in a, in a, into account. We were told last night that the cabinet will make a final decision tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We know that there are strong arguments both sides as with regards to the closing or uh, uh, opening of schools, uh, schools are remaining open. A very, very difficult to, uh, decision that cabinet needs to make. Absolutely. As you speak about the, the difficult decisions, we know that the president made mention last week of the World Health Organization, which had cautioned against uh, the reopening of schools while the virus is at its peak. And uh, the president, of course, speaking about how they uh, listen and engage uh, to come up with some form of conclusion there. Now, when a body like the WHO makes and gives out such a word of caution, surely that's uh, something significant to consider. Yes, absolutely. That is a serious consideration that needs to be taken into account. The, the problem is, what do you do with the 9 million plus children that need to be fed at schools uh, if, uh, if you don't have the schools open? Um, what do you do about the millions of parents being affected? Um, <clears throat> what do you do about the fact that children will indeed, and adults, teachers, will in any event be affected in less controlled environments such as the community environment outside of the school gates. Uh, those are serious considerations that also need to be taken into consideration. And, and the, the final thing is that I'd like to say mm -hmm. is we are having to make a decision whether to, re to, to close schools or not. Um, whilst we're awaiting the peak, we don't know with exact signs that when the peak is going to be. So we can't really take this uncertainty into consideration when making as 
and important decisions such as this. The actual peak can reach us in September. Mm -hmm. It can reach us in November, and it can last until next year. So uh, um, the president has also said last Sunday that is, it is every single South African's individual responsibility to take responsibility uh, and to fight the, vi the, the virus through the non-pharmaceutical proto pro uh, protocols and measures. Um, we're not going to stop this merely by making a decision. We as South Africans must take responsibility. Now, as you make mention of how children uh, are safer, perhaps at school under controlled uh, boundaries, there's also the staff to consider. Some may be in high-risk groups who should not work away from home, more especially as we learn of the growing mortality rate. We surely cannot ignore the fact that over 20 school staff in the Western Cape alone have died of COVID-19. Yes, uh, absolutely. The, the point there is that um, uh, did, did they contract the virus at school? Will the school closure actually mean a difference to the situation? Um, many of these people contract the virus outside of the school and bring it to the school where, as I've said, if they come to the school, they screen. And you can have some measure of protection inside the school. Uh, I don't believe that the closure of schools will make any impact in the spread of the virus outside the school gates in the community. Um, certainly, uh, the directions issued by the minister make provision for various uh, options with regard to a particular community's uh, particular circumstances where a particular school may close for a short period of time, where provision is made for different options, all conceivable eventualities are dealt with in the uh, ministerial directions, and we believe that if those are applied with responsibility, then all of these problems, most of the problems that uh, come up, uh, and which are raised can be dealt with uh, at far, as far as is humanly possible. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I would have liked to speak about the outstanding issues, including the provision of water, the building of toilets and additional classes as uh, perhaps uh, this time frame to uh, be used and utilized to work on those uh, pressing issues. We'll continue to bring you more news. That was uh, FETSA's uh, Paul Kolditz, uh, the CEO there, expanding on their view.